On today's episode of Homeworthy, we're showing you how interior designer Amanda Lindroth reimagined an empty and massive great room into an intimate tropical paradise at the Kipps Bay Show House in Palm Beach, Florida. A coral-filled armoire and faux tortoiseshell fireplace honor Amanda's bohemian roots and create a grounding moment that lightens the enormity of the space. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hello, I'm Amanda Lindroth. I have offices in the Bahamas, in Palm Beach and Charleston. We designed this room in less than three months. We're so proud of it and we can't wait to show it to you. Amanda, you were given this amazing living room that is massive. Where do you start with a room this large? Well, you know, when we were given this room, we had the same question. We had to <laughs> literally think, my God, this is this epic opportunity to do something really of magnitude, of like a wondrous, um, a wondrous uh, opportunity. So we really went back to the books. We were looking at, at rooms that have inspired me through my career. And one of them is a very famous room that was photographed by Horst in the 70s at the Villa Brandolini. It's a room called the Winter Loggia. And it's a bit of a what the English would call a, 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 cons a conservatory. It's a room full of plants and vines and giant trees and wicker and rattan. It was decorated by Renzo Mangiardino. And it was a real starting point for this room for us. Did you really make a concerted effort to bring the outside in, given that we are on the water in Palm Beach? Yes, we wanted it to be full of plants, wanted it to be full of leaves. We got the largest palm trees. In fact, they were a little bit larger than we anticipated when they came in. How did um, you bring these in? I, a lot of effort, a lot, a lot of other people's effort. Deconstructing trees yeah. to bring them into the house. Exactly, exactly. Well, but, but living things give such yes. life and to a room. Well, a room needs all the senses. It needs scent. It needs beautiful, probably scent coming from the kitchen, things to eat, things to drink, wonderful plants, you know, um, and light. You know, this room has beautiful light coming off of the lake in Palm Beach. We were so fortunate. I mean, imagine the gratitude we had when we got this room. We literally jumped for joy. You did hit the jackpot. Yeah. So you grew up in Florida. You yes. live in the Bahamas now. I do. How have these warm weather tropical places influenced your sense of design and style? Well, it's funny that you ask that. We work all over the place. We just finished a giant, big, beautiful house in Pacific Heights in San Francisco, oh, wow. and one in San Diego, and we work in New York. But the DNA of this sort of tropical Amanda sort of tends to always follow me. We use always in all of our projects lots of crisp linens and cottons and printed fabrics. Very often, even our projects in, in colder climates do have linen curtains with trims and things. So, and, and I'm always going to be a fan of rattan and wicker. They're part of my DNA. And, you know, Renzo Mangiardino, the famous Italian uh, designer, was the first one to put rattan in Morella and Yelly's Fifth Avenue apartment and really legitimized mm -hmm. using it in, in real climates, uh, different climates, um, not it's just not in just the tropical. Sunshine. Yeah, exactly. So let's walk through the room a little bit. Tell us how you, when you looked at this room and this space, what did you decide to do first? You know, we had to tackle the walls. So the house came with these rather beautiful um, sort of faux limestone block walls. And very often we'll use an idiom like that in a room, but it also had limestone floors. And, and it, it, felt, it felt like it really needed a facelift. So we took the great step to have to skim all the walls and then paint them. And then we went to the books that we use very often when we're looking for motifs, these beautiful, in this case, Indian ancient Indian decorative books to look at things and we in CAD in a, in, on a computer um, Mimi from our office put this all into CAD wow. having chosen these vi these various idioms and then our decorative painter uh, Brian Lever came down and and did it for us and we wanted it to it's be It's all hand painted? It's all hand painted yeah. Oh my gosh Amanda mm -hmm. it's stunning and then did you add the molding? The molding was here we just painted it and as were all the sort of corbels and fancy to do's that went around the um, the window casings. The, the, the fireplace was challenging. It was very grand, and I put that in inverted commas because it was not necessarily grand in a good way, and we weren't exactly what, sure how to tackle it. Um, and we thought about doing a sort of a faux marble, but it worried me that it would look, people would think I was trying to actually make it look like marble when it was meant to be ah. ironic. But so in this case, we did something incredibly fantasy, and we made a a tortoiseshell box out of it, so uh, with a sort of fake bone inlay. It was just sort of, I don't know, it came out of nowhere, and the brown is actually quite good in the, in the room, it grounds it. So, there's obviously a lot of places to sit. Yeah. This is intentional, yes. I imagine. Yes, yes. 
So, you know, when there are so many different ways to tackle a giant room like this, and, um, and so we look at, at classical examples of it. How did they do it at Chatsworth? Or how did they do it at Highgrove? And, and you know, it's interesting, but the, the French do it slightly differently than the, than the English. And I sort of, sort of have studied both ways to tackle a room this size. This seemed like a really good, um, a good, a good remedy for this giant room is to have two distinct sides. One, the room's off center, which is a little funny. Everything's a little out of whack. And when the girls were putting this in CAD for us, they said, where do we find you the center? You can't tell, though. I know. It, we were very fortunate because it was a, it, becomes a game of inches where oh. you just cheat a little here and cheat a little there. But um, you know, I said to them, don't concentrate on center, concentrate on comfort. How much room does this chair need? How much room? And in fact, in the field while we were putting it together, we had surprises, which is so funny because we'd been very meticulous on paper of, of making sure things were sort of measured to the inch. And then we thought, well, that side actually needs another pair of chairs and let's go grab this from there. And, um, and then we had eventually had four of these trees in this room. They, they didn't all make it in, but when we saw the size of the first one, we giggled. We were like, I think we'll have two. <laughs> Otherwise, you might have a greenhouse. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, this looks like a very comfortable room where you just want to sit down, plop on the couch, and read a book. Yes. And I feel like that is very much your style. It is. Inviting it and is. welcoming. And how do it you is. achieve that? You know, I feel like generosity in everything one do, does in life is so important and it, it really does translate straight to decorating. A house has to feel like it's lived in, like it's generous. So they, you know, Kip Space said, well, are we gonna put ribbons on these things that do not sit? And I said, no, I'd rather put an invitation that says, please do sit. And if you spill, we will handle it. Right. We'll clean it. I want the room That's to wonderful. feel loved and, and used. And, and that is actually really essential to the decorating I do, is that the houses have to have this level of generosity, of comfort, and, and they need to be loved. So if, if, your, if your carpet gets dirty, it's not a crisis, have it cleaned. Right. It means that there's life having children, dogs, that there's life, cocktail parties. Yeah. There should be life in these houses. It's a wonderful way to approach design, right? It's not too precious. It can't be precious. It doesn't look good when it's precious. It looks good when it's a little broken, yeah. when it's a little dented, when the flowers are a little faded. That all actually, it actually helps. You know, we, when we did this room, it was so important that the, that the items were not visibly traceable. It's not easy to find them. These beautiful rattan chairs do come from my own collection, mandolinderoth.com. However, but the, most of the items, we borrowed beautiful antiques from Cedric DuPont. My, my wonderful girls um, were here last week from Nassau, sleeping on the floor in my apartment, so full of excitement and, and vigor and energy getting this room pulled together and running around town finding all the elements. Um, I'd like to also talk about these beautiful light fixtures, which uh, Courtney and Randy Talinsky made for us at Bungalow uh, Classic in Atlanta. They're so fresh and they're, with, they're made with Chris Madelisse. I think they're geniuses. I saw them uh, in their own showroom and I said, please, can we have those for Chris Bay? They're stunning. Yeah. Talk about all of this coral and this beautiful is Thank it a you. break front or what do you call it? it was a, it's a giant, I think, Italian cabinet. It's 117 inches tall. We borrowed it from Cedric. Um, he was so generous to lend us these very precious things from his beautiful collection. Um, and uh, my team ordered all that coral online. We unpacked it. I brought the silver bits from, um, from the Bahamas in my hand luggage. Um, and we put it together in about 20 minutes, literally. Are you serious? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's such a statement. Right? It almost functions as art. I think so. And the cabinet originally has doors. Uh, it, has, it came with doors, and we just didn't put them on. I thought it was so much prettier without them. I like them. it without the doors. Right? And I think that's another thing in decorating don't you know don't you don't have to th things aren't as precious as you think right take the doors right. off stick them under your bed they'll when you want to sell the piece and you'll still have them that'll still hold its value right. this is a huge coffee table yes how do you start what, what is the first thing you do when you have a table of this size you know I think since we have four elevations of people sitting at this table you have to be sure that all four of them have something of interest so you can't just put a bunch of things on one side or one side or just in the middle so i think you know and we all you know we also like a layered look we think right. all rooms need books and they should have novels in them they should be current novels all rooms need current magazines probably daily newspapers if you're mm -hmm. living in a really a really loved house so we, in this in this on this coffee table we have Jennifer Ash Rudick's beautiful new Palm Beach Living Book, the Veranda Magazine that featured a very, very special client's house in it last a couple of months ago, some beautiful coral, which gives us the sense of place of where we are in Florida, a scented candle, some, some nuts, a beautiful watercolor that my friend Brooke Lachlan did oh, of my house in, in, um, in the Bahamas, 
and a little cabinet of curiosities um, friend that we borrowed from Hanimator, and then these beautiful hurricanes from my collection um, with candles in them and shells and things. So uh, to answer your question, how do we assemble this? We just do, you know what I mean? We just get all the elements. So we shop for, we'll say we'll need books, we'll need trays, we'll need shells, we need, we need objects. We get them all in one spot and then we play with it until we think it looks right. And you curate it, yeah. you, you yeah. move things around. Yeah, and Height. scale is so uh -huh. important. In fact, that, you know, when we started doing this room, I always work with scale first and you want a room to do this a little bit. So you need a little height in the, in the center. The room was meant to have a big, uh, lemon tree. It just was too much with the orchids. So um, you want a room to have that play in it. So I think uh, we're, we're super excited about this room. These are love letters between my daughter and I. <laughs> are you serious? Yes. <laughs> when, when did you do these? We, they, we, always, we give that message to each other all the time and then you just drop it on a pit bed pillow or you send a little email with it and it's just a message. It's an F. Scott Fitzgerald quote that I love so much. And we tend to send it to each other r routinely. So I just framed up and two of them. And you framed them in little um, just for here. I thought oh it was a good luck gosh. charm for the for the for the room. What a beautiful sentimental touch. So the tea the tea set seems super granny. Oh, I love it. Yeah, and it was done with purpose and intent. One of the other inspirations for this room is if you have seen on Netflix the Durls in Corfu. The, You're the, ahead of me on the Netflix. Okay, but tell so me. it's a magical um, series written about a family that left England in the 30s because they were sort of aristocratic bearing but poor. She's a widow, she has four children, she's played by that famous English actress Kylie whatever, she played the Queen, and they go to Corfu and they live in this falling down Palladian house that's completely cata catastrophic. On the hill is the rich Countess Mavridaki and she's in the most glorious, most glorious Palladian house you've ever seen and she's, this, she's played by Leslie Caron, and she's the Grand Countess with the English butler hidden up on the hill in the mansion. And I kind of think of this room as Countess Mavridaki's <laughs> Palm Beach winter resident. The house is so glorious, and I did a little Google search on it, and it was built in 1928 for the British High Commission to the Aeolian Islands, which is so romantic, and it ultimately became the summer residence for the, for the Greek royal family. Um, and then in, in, fict in, in fiction, it's my Countess Mavridaki's house. And this is her tea set. The tea set. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Countess Mavridaki would have tea more than cocktails. Cocktails are on the other side. Cock or she'd have tea and cookies, and yeah. you'd have the cookies yeah. out we as do. well. Exactly. You are ready. We're ready to entertain for all all possibilities here. Drinks or tea. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, that's the sign of a wonderful hostess. Well, thank you which so is much. You. That's very kind of you. Hopefully. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.